Hi, I'm Matt Wilkie, and today I'm going to talk about our first video of moving to the UK from the Philippines. It's April 13th, 2014. I've been in the UK since uh, the end of January. My wife April and my two kids uh, from our marriage are in the Philippines and going through the process of immigration to the UK involves six months pay slips, six months bank statements, uh, 18,600 minimum income plus another 2,400 minimum income per child um, to meet the minimum criteria. It's farcical because you could be virtually bankrupt. Um, what I mean is, for example, say your income is £150,000 a year, yet you have £2 million worth of debt you're actually going to get through the system easier than somebody on a low income um, even though you're about to go bust uh, bit unfair but I don't even know what, how they worked out these figures for 18.6 in the first place um, there must have been an equation to work out how many people that would actually stop being able to apply um, I'm above the threshold by the way um, but my gripe is the six months here of paperwork just to be able to process as a minimum. Um, I have a good job, I work for a good company, um, but if it takes me six to 12 months to get the paperwork ready for before process, it's gonna take me at least 14 to 16 months before I see my family. I find that unacceptable. I mean, the UK border agency probably think that's, that's fine because it's not their families. Um, I know you, you can find stuff online where you know, families have been messed about because the border agency are getting hassled by uh, political agenda. Um, it's an election year coming up, and as such, one of the hot topics is not expensive scandals, it's immigration. Everything's the immigrant's fault. Um, so, that's the downside. Positive side is after looking at the state of the UK, um, and the fact is, it's not, it's not going to be improving for some time. Um, I'm going to be looking at Spain, France, or Germany, or Greece instead. Um, the main reason I'm looking at Spain is that the housing market in Spain is very low at the moment, which means we can purchase a house cheap. Um, the education system is pretty good. Uh, there's great food, great weather. Um, now, what? How does that compare to the UK? Um, you know, so I didn't mention work. That's because I'll actually still be working in the UK. I'll commute it. But this is a, this is a subject um, which I just wanted to do a comparison here. If if I rent a house in the UK in 2006 to 2007, my rent was £400 a month for a two-bedroom house. Now that same house is £650 a month. I can get a three-bedroom villa in Spain from about £250 to £300 a month. Um, if I squeeze a little bit more, I can have one with a swimming pool, a private swimming pool. Um, Food costs in the UK has, have risen considerably, yet I'm sure it'll be much cheaper in Spain. Because um, a lot of the food for Europe is produced in Spain already. The, the next thing is kids' education. It's going to be okay. Um, I can't see it being a big problem in Spain. Uh, I haven't looked into the schooling for the public schools. Um, but it'll be something I'm looking at because I'm not interested in having an expat international school. Uh, I want the children to integrate so that they're fluent uh, in both languages. Well, I say both, they already speak more than two. Um, but the integrate fully into the, um, the country because then they, they're in the right direction for a long term future. But on top of that, you're looking at weather. Now weather, um, 
isn't always about it being sunny outside. What it's about is the heating and cooling costs money. Um, now, if I live in Spain, I'm sure I'm going to have air conditioning on a bit more than I should do. But I'm more likely to put fans in and use fans. Um, where the UK, I'm finding that the cost of gas and electric is phenomenal. Um, because guess what? I can put solar panels in Spain. I can put a solar water heater in Spain. I could, I could plumb in a solar water heating system in Spain so that my heating's free. Yeah, Spain is becoming a very good option. <laughs> Um, I'm not sounding so smug because at the end of the day, it's, it's not that um, I'm not happy about the fact that I'm being forced to look at other options because I'm being forced out, out of the UK. Um, because I earn good money, I should have a good standard of living in the UK, but the UK is quite simply not what it used to be. Um, it's, a, it's disappointing for me um, because. This, this is the country that I originally come from, um, but also it's, it's a country where I have family here and I just don't feel most people are happy these days. Um, I think a lot of it is down to the fact of debt. Um, because what, what, what's happened is most people I know have some considerable debt be it a mortgage, be it the car, be it the credit card, there is some considerable debt. Um, I know people talk about university fees and all that sort of stuff, but most of my friends didn't go to university. Um, they're, they're normal working class people. Um, my college I paid for myself, I'm about to do another degree myself um, and pay for it myself. But I won't do it unless I've actually got the money to do it. I don't, I wouldn't borrow anything if I can help it. Um, which is why uh, I'm in a better position than most people to just say, okay, let's just walk away from the UK. Um, but it's, it's difficult. Um, but we are looking at moving to Europe. And what we're basically doing at the moment, because uh, um, Spain is, quickly becoming that option um, because of its location um, and its cost of living. I can afford to commute to the UK from Spain um, to the UK um, and I could even do it in batches like I've always done where I'll come in and do three or four months at a time if I have to and then go back for six months. I can afford to do that. Um, at the same time, I'm hoping I can actually wangle to keep the job I have now. Because um, a lot of time, we commute for a long period of time. Um, for example, I'm in Glasgow at the moment, so I've got five weeks in Scotland. But a lot of the time, I have paperwork. So I could actually do two weeks in Glasgow and two weeks at home on paperwork. It's all doable. Um, plus, there's data analyzing I can do. Uh, I won't bore you with what I do for work, but the fact is I can relocate anywhere on the planet. Uh, Philippines is a bit more difficult because it takes me a day and a half to get there or a day and a half to get back. <laughs> so it's a bit too far. But three hours on a Friday um, is very doable to be in Spain for the weekend. Um, now the reason I also brought this up is a lot of people are thinking about moving to the UK when there's other options out there. If you have a skill set that you can utilize elsewhere, I would recommend doing what I'm doing. Um, if you make most of your money online, go to Spain, you get a better standard of life um, and cheaper cost of living. If you work in the oil fields, go to Spain. It's cheaper, it change your, um, change your, what do you call it, domicile. I think you can actually save money on tax as well um, because to be honest the UK wants far more out of me than I ever take out of the economy I've never asked the UK for anything um, and it's like people who oh, well, they, you know the UK educated you 
Um, believe it or not, it's my parents and their tax that paid for my education. Um, it wasn't the UK. I've paid excessive amounts of tax in the UK for over 18 years. Um, I can't see me owing the UK a single thing. If anything, it's constantly been in my back pocket, taking money um, for benefits grounders, um, MP expenses, and pretty much nothing else. It's done nothing for me. Um, it doesn't mean I'm anti-British, because I don't think it's people of the United Kingdom. It's bad government, uh, and the government is the government is not something that's easy to control um, I find that the fact is the government seems to do what it wants it's, it's, I find too many similarities between corrupt governments in developing nations and the British government um, to actually see what the difference is between the two because they're normally involved on both sides anyway the aid and uh, well, so NGOs, non-government organisations, uh, non-profit organisations, they're all about hiding money and profiteering. Um, yeah, it's, it, the UK isn't what it used to be, that's for sure. But I'm looking at Spain, I'm looking to get my kids and wife over there as soon as we can. Um, oh yeah, it won't take two years to process the documents, by the way. Um, we just basically wait until I've earned enough for our safety net and our travel money. Um, we've got two months of documents we're waiting for in the Philippines, but within two or three months, pretty much we'll have everything we need to migrate to Spain. Um, a little bit odd compared to the two years <laughs> that it'll take to come to the UK we wanted. Because um, the funny thing is, if I wanted to sit on my backside, uh, be unemployed, or do the 16-hour a week, um, the, the minimum wage stuff to get your maximum benefits, family tax credits, and all that nonsense in the UK, that would be the best option for me. But I'm not. I'm not a scrounger. I don't like unemployment. I don't like going to unemployment offices. Um, I don't. I don't like not having something to do. I don't like not working. Um, my wife's the same. And to be honest, if the UK has built a system that is built for parasites, Atlas will eventually shrug. And this one has. I'm prepared to just move ship and up roots and move again um, out of the Philippines into Spain while still keeping operations in Spain as well, uh, in the Philippines as well. I'll work wherever I'm needed um, and it's just disappointing that the UK thinks that fixing immigration with people like myself, um, and I say people like myself because you've got people from Australia with Australian wives, you've got um, people from Canada, uh, people from the Middle East, people from pretty much everywhere that have foreign partners. but. Guess what? All those people survived in countries with no benefit systems. Most of them have had overseas postings because they're a benefit to the economy where they were. If they're coming back, it could be a case of they're a benefit to the economy because most of them are. But what you're actually doing is swapping out skilled people by making it difficult to, to return to the UK for unskilled people, bizarrely. You know, you see it in the media where they're griping about Romanian gypsies and stuff because they've got EU citizenship um, coming to the UK and claiming all the benefits. That's what you're swapping us out with. Um, how funny is that? At the same time, the UK is full of people that don't want to work as well. A problem that nobody wants to face ended up with the poll tax riots last time. <laughs> There's a problem with an economy when you end up with too, too much of the voters um, being unemployed or 
from the government itself. When they control the vote, an economy is going to struggle to sort itself out until it all completely collapse. Um, and that's where we're heading. So I'll be happy in Spain. Anyway, this is video one. And it's not all doom and gloom, by the way. I'm not negative. A lot of stuff I do say is a bit cynical because I do take everything a bit tongue in cheek and I see the positive in everything. So even when, even when they were making me a head, making a headache to move to the UK, um, I just thought, hey, I spent six years in Germany as a child. I wonder what Germany's like. And then I was like, we're slowly working around looking at each country in Europe and Spain looks quite nice this time of year. <laughs> so I do all I can say is like, I you may find some of the stuff I say is a little bit harsh, but it's just because I just like, uh, take it all with a pinch of salt and just shrug it off. You know, I used to work with social housing. I've worked with all the, what they call the benefit class. Um, drug addicts that smash up their entire house and expect to have windows fitted by Monday uh, claiming it was a break-in yet they've done it three weeks on the trial um, I worked on houses that have been um, firebombed every week I've, um, I've seen the social animals that we have in the UK even though many people complain about foreigners come to the country yet they won't even look in their own backyard because that's a political vote an entire house in the state of unemployed people have a lot of clout when it comes to votes um, so yeah I mean the benefit system needs a reform but I don't even think they know what they're doing you know the government doesn't know how to deal with it uh, same with the immigration it's targeting people like myself while um letting other people uh, into the country when they signed up to stuff they didn't even understand. So I do not know, you know, I can't take it serious, that's all I can say. Um, I know it's a very serious thing, but you've got to live to learn that not everything's in your control, but what is, is learning to adapt, change, and move to a situation that is beneficial to you, your family, and everyone around you. Um, if you accept failure and that's the only way, that's all you will find. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, sorry it's another 20 minute video, but uh, hope you enjoyed and looking forward to your comments. Thank you.